Hello and welcome to our service, short service for Ascension uh, Day. I'd particularly like to thank Nick, Ben and Jane for their input into this service. And as always, you can follow along with the order of service below the video. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of the trumpet. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days we have been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb and his defeat of the power of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today, we recall how he left this earth and returned to his father, ascending into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers, trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule. Let us hear the story of his parting. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, Suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah! Let us pray that our risen and ascended Lord will lead us to eternal life. Risen Christ, you have raised our human nature to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek and serve you, that we may join you at the Father's side, where you reign with the Spirit in glory, now and forever. Amen. So, our Gospel reading. Alleluia, alleluia. Go and make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. Remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and, lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Nick. And now a reflection uh, from Ben. Well, today is Ascension Day, as we know. But I want to talk to you for a few minutes, not so much about ascent as descent. St Luke tells us that Jesus ascended into heaven in the presence of his disciples on the Mount of Olives, a mountain of about just over two and a half thousand feet in height. And after he'd been taken from their sight, we're told that they returned to Jerusalem. What goes up must come down. Now, as anyone who has climbed hills will bear witness, it's a lot easier to go up than down. When you're going up, you're leaning into the slope and all you have to do is to doggedly put one foot in front of the other until you get to the top, which may not be easy, but it's doable. But when you turn around to come down, suddenly things get a lot harder because you're still leaning back now into the hill and your feet are too far in front of you and there's a sense that at any moment your feet might slip away from under you and you would fall over. So strange as it may sound, I think that for the round trip up and down the Mount of Olives, the disciples might have found the going up easier than the coming down. When they had got to the top, their experience would have been what the Celtic Christians centuries later would call that of being in a thin place where the, the divide between earth and heaven, between God and man, human and divine, suddenly gets very narrow. It seems so thin that you're able to sense the presence of God, to hear his voice even to feel God's Spirit enfolding and guiding you. And isn't that actually what a lot of we Christians seek a lot of the time? Wouldn't we, what would we give for a mountaintop experience? Something to be savoured, something to be prolonged. But we know that we can't stay there forever. We know, if we read St Luke, that we're not meant to stay there forever. St Luke tells us that while Jesus was going from the disciples' sight up into heaven, and they were gazing up towards heaven, two men appeared, two angels, in fact, appeared, and effectively asked them why they were staring up into the skies. You see, there's more to life the moments in the thin places of our world. Even as he was preparing to ascend, Jesus, who taught the disciples so much about power in weakness, greatness through service, was teaching them about the way down, his instructions to them in Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, stay here in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. How many times do we fondly imagine that the way of Christ, perhaps even the way of discipleship, is a journey up? Actually, it's the opposite. The story of Jesus is a story of coming down. He came down to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of all, we sing at Christmas. The message of Jesus, from the manger to the cross, from the tomb to today's Mount of Ascension, 
is that this world is changed not from the top, but from the bottom. And as he rises, we hear him tell us to keep our eyes fixed on this earth, to head back down the mountain to the places where he made his life and did his work. Yes, we'd love to stay in the thin places where the vision of God's glory is so clear. Yes, the downhill journey is uncomfortable, precarious, full of pitfalls. But down we are called to go because, as the disciples were to discover, it was not in the thin place, but it was in Jerusalem itself, in all its hubbub and mess and noise, that the Holy Spirit met with them and transformed them, empowered them, enabled them, commissioned them for service. What he did for them, he does for us too, if we look in the right places. So the disciples did make their way down from the Mount of Olives back to the city of Jerusalem. And as we know from their experience of Jesus, and their encounter with the Holy Spirit and their growing knowledge and reliance on him grew a community which no man can number and which in time came to include even you and me. Today we remember that journey once more. We remember that we are called to follow in that same way, downhill, because only for Jesus is it true that what comes down must go up. Amen. So we join together in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So, a time of intercessory prayer. Gazing upon the ascended Christ, let us pray. Jesus Christ, living forever to intercede for us. Pray for your church, your broken body in the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, enthroned at the right hand of the majesty on high, pray for the world 
and make it subject to your gentle rule. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, drawing humanity into the life of God. Pray for your brothers and sisters in need, distress or sorrow. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, bringing us to glory through your death and resurrection, surround with your saints and angels those who have died trusting your promises. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, ascended far above the heavens and filling the universe, pray for us who receive the gifts you give us for work in your service. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us have a time of silent prayer gazing upon the ascended Christ and offering our own concerns or being still in his presence. Jesus Christ, keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at your feet, for you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Thank you, Jane. And we close our prayers together by joining in in the Lord's Prayer looking for the coming of his kingdom as our saviour taught us so we pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then the disciples returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, they were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. So a responsory. As we wait in silence, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we listen to your word, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we worship you in majesty, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your refreshing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your renewing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your equipping, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your empowering, make us ready for your coming spirit. God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. 
Amen. God the Son, who is our great High Priest, passed into the heavens, plead for you at the right hand of the Father. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who pours out his abundant gifts upon the church, make you faithful servants of Christ our King. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and those you love and pray for always. Amen. waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.